Thank you for making our time to listen to this innovation, wisdom field, and life transforming message from Dr. Joshua Kolaoli. He is a transforming mind evangelist with Valdemar's College. Our passion is to make you a strategic innovator and help you move from a socialized mind into a transforming mind, a self transforming mind. Now let's take a deep dive into the message. I love Valdemar. Hello, my dear viewers. It's always a treat to come to you, as you always know. I I love having interactions with students and it's always my passion to see students excel in all their examination. So it's my passion and it's something that drives me. So my dear viewers, uh, hello my dear viewers, it's always my passion to come to you and uh, to see students excel. It's, it's what drives me. It what, it's what brings joy to me. So it's, it's my passion. And I would love you to embrace it with everything. Embrace this opportunity, this session with everything in you. I would love you to embrace this session with everything in you. I would love you to, to, to listen to the end. I would love you to take this talk seriously. And I would love you to also check other videos that have been uploaded or uh, done live or, or on this page. It's Valdemar School of Advanced and Preliminary Studies page. Uh, I would love to come weekly to discuss passionately about our students with Excel, how they will build leadership competences. And it's more importantly about driving Valdemar's project to read. I am a Transforming Minds Evangelist. This whole project is powered by Valdemar's Intelligence LLC uh, in Grand Prairie, Texas in the United States of America. So I, I would love to go over five uh, core things, five key principles that drives examination success uh, for students. And you see, once you're able to embrace this five, you would, you would, you would subdue any exam ahead of you. In fact, if you embrace it as a leadership culture in your life, you will subdue any life challenge that comes uh, towards you. So it's something I would love you to embrace uh, deeply. Uh, well, the Valdemar's Project to Read program, it's, it means restoring excellence and academic diligence. We encourage all students to shun all forms of examination malpractices. Uh, we want them to read, to study, to learn, and to succeed with pride. That is what drives us. We want students to read, to learn, to study, to excel with pride. Uh, to, we, we, with pride, you understand. And we want uh, parents, older siblings, to stop destroying the future of our young minds. We do not want you to fund or support any form of examination malpractice again. We call on all teachers, school owners, communities, and political office holders to strengthen our academic values. We call on all examination bodies to step up their game against all forms of examination malpractices. We also want all fellow pupils, candidates to stand their ground and maintain examination standards. Take pride in your success. Can someone repeat this? Take pride in your success. So my passion today is to share these key values, key things that can help you to, to succeed on your own. Build leadership capacities. You understand, build leadership capacities by yourself and, and then be able to excel. So uh, more importantly, if, you, if you're following me, I need you to understand that this is coming from Valdemar's College. We are a mind transforming school. We are into the mind transforming business and we're building metal leaders. We're actually the industry standard. If you want to do A-level programs in Nigeria, we're the industry standard for access, for quality and for relevant education at this level. We operate the best and most innovative school management system and even structure in Nigeria. We teach, we do not only teach, we train and then we transform. So we teach, so we're academically sound, we train, so we have solid leadership system, character system, development system, and then we transform. So it's a complete school. It's a complete school that makes you a leader. And that is the reason why parents trust us. And that's the reason why we have hundreds of students year on year and we excel and we, we excel. So, and we also secure admission for all our students.
we support all of them to get admission. I, I love this quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I love to put it every time because there's nothing in the world more dangerous than sincere ignorance and consensual stupidity. When you have knowledge like this, the essence of the knowledge is for you to liberate you. So it's your responsibility to be intelligent, not just to go to any school because it's close to you or is in your state. You can travel for 400 miles if you need to achieve success somewhere instead of just staying in terms of proximity to your place. Valdimas is located in Ilori, Nigeria. We do excellent training and you would love to be part of us. Intelligence is not just enough, intelligence plus character. That's the goal of true education. And that is what Valdimas stands for. So therefore, you are not what happened to you, but you are what you choose to become. You're not what happens to you, you are just what you choose to become. So I'm urging you today to embrace uh, Valdemars and as in, and you know, another quote by Meg Megan Roxen says, if, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. But when you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. I would love to start with this first point. I have five points to discuss with you. And I need you to get a pen or a pencil and start writing down uh, as you listen to today's talk. I love you. I need you to passionately listen to me and listen to the end, please. The first point is passion. Passion is the intense desire to achieve purpose. And it's the driver of all visions on earth. Look, that strong enthusiasm or interest, that intense or overwhelming feeling or conviction that drives you towards purpose is called passion. And as a student, you must have an intense desire for success. It's the starting point. An intense desire, you must covet it. You must want it with everything in you. So I stimulate you today. I challenge you today. I encourage you today to see yourself as successful. You have the capacity. The, the truth about passion is anybody can become passionate once you make up your mind. It's formed out of commitment. So just commit in your heart that I am passionate. And now passion will start reflecting in the way you think because the way you think will now guide what you will do, what you will speak out, the things you will submit to and how you will live your life. Passion would help you. Your passion must be guarded with wisdom, but you need passion. You need passion to think properly. You need passion to speak positively towards your academic success. You need passion to know the teachers to submit to. And, and I'm not saying you should be rude to every teacher or any teacher. I am only saying you must submit to people who will teach you well. So like I need a tutorial session. I need to know who to teach me well. So passion is an intense desire. You must have passion. It is the only fuel that would make you achieve success. Look, nothing should distract you. Nothing should take away your passion. And how do I mean? Your passion towards your academics must be stronger than passion towards any other thing while pursuing your academic purpose. So if you're passionate, that's not the time you would have uh, time to go and be doing birthdays, celebrating birthdays up and down, or helping someone, a friend to celebrate birthdays. That's not the time you will be committed to events and other activities. If you're passionate about your academics for a period of time, you may need to drop even your passion in your religious organization. It's not a time to now be running Elton Skelter from morning to evening about either church or mosque program or traditional programs, as the case may be. You must remember that your passion must be towards that thing that drives your intense desire. That is the essence of passion. It is what drives you to achieve purpose. It is that thing that drives you to achieve purpose or vision on earth. So you must be passionate. You must be passionate in the way you think. And that is why you cannot afford to allow anybody distract you. You must be passionate in the way you speak. You must be passionate in the way you speak and in the way you live your life. In the way... You must be passionate in the way you live. Passion will guard you towards wisdom. Passion will guard you towards wisdom. And it would help you to achieve your purpose. You must have a strong enthusiasm towards your success. You must have a strong enthusiasm towards your success. You must have strong enthusiasm towards your success and you must be guarded. Number two that you must never forget is the clarity of your thought. The clarity of your thought, the clarity of purpose and deep meaning, your resilience and intentionality to achieve purpose. 
it must be strong. Your continuous evaluation, reality of fact check. You must be a man of faith as a student. As a student, your sense of focus must be high. What do you want from your studies? It must be clear to you. I want to become a medical doctor. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a lawyer. I want to become a business analyst. I want to become an educational technologist. I want to become a medical labs technologist or scientist. You must have clarity of thought on what you want from your studies. There must be clarity of purpose and deep meaning. You must know who you are. And then there should be resilience. You see, who you are will help you a lot because it will guide the way you will have intentionality to achieve purpose. Some people may need to read five hours to achieve what some will read in one hour. But it's a good way to start when you know yourself and you pursue it intentionally. So there must be clarity of purpose. There must be deep meaning. There must be resilience. You must also do fact check, fact and reality checks continuously. At every point in your life, you must evaluate what you're doing every day. Before you go to bed in the evening, you must evaluate yourself. I hope I am doing well. And then because you're a person of faith, faith will reflect in your thinking, it will reflect in your speaking, it will reflect in your living. It is the ability to use your imaginative capacity to break the box of your physical realm and be able to analyze that, okay, for this exam, I can excel with an AAA. I can get distinctions all through. And that will strengthen your capability to maintain that pace to achieve that distinction. So you must be a man of strange dimension of focus. You must be a man of strange dimension of focus. You must love, you must love passion because that passion is what will drive you. It is what will keep pushing you on to excel. That passion is the driver of your success. You must be a passionate man, number one. Then you must be a man of strange focus. Focus will drive you to be strategic. There will be little things you will need to do. You can't do everything to succeed. Just get it right. But the few things you will do, you will hold them daily. And there will be few priority things that can make you excel. So don't just pick the few weak things. Pick the few things that will achieve higher results. You know, Pareto principle talks about the 2080 rule. The 20% 20 things you will do that will achieve 80% of your results, 80% of your scores. Those are the things you would learn to do. So when you're a man of passion, driven by focus, it helps you narrow down your focus and clarify your purpose and the deep reason why you're studying. Because who you are will determine what your purpose should be and what the deep meaning, what will give you joy and fulfillment. And your passion is what will drive your resilience, your intentionality to achieve purpose. It will also make you do fact check, re reality check every time. What level am I? You'll be a person of faith, the ability to use your imaginative capacity. Yes, uh, the next thing is curiosity. You must be a curious person. As a student, number one, I mentioned you must be a passionate person. Number two, you must be a person of focus. Number three, you must be a curious mind. You must have intellectual yearning and pursuit of knowledge. You must be hungry for knowledge. It is not over until you excel. You must seek higher grounds daily. It is not that it is over when the student exam is finished. No, it is not over until you excel. So you must seek knowledge with skill, with precision, and with determination. There should be people you go to meet, precision. You must seek knowledge with skill, with precision, and with determination. You must seek knowledge with skill, with precision, and with determination. Don't forget this, because it will help you to know the kind of textbooks, the kind of online materials to go for, softwares to learn from, with skill, with precision, and with determination. And that's why it's good to consult to ask questions. You must be a person of strong adaptation. Le listen, you don't compete with strength. 
I'm not going to sit down and say, I want to compete with you reading 10, 10 hours. I will compete with strategy. What are the strategies for me to excel in this exam? So when I know that there are questions that are 25 marks and there are questions that are half of that, I strategically position myself to excel more in those ones. When I know that my project carries more mark than the other quizzes, I strategically focus more strength to the project and more others, lesser strength to the quiz. I still want to achieve excellence in the quiz, but more excellence in the project. You must see completeness of information part time as a student, completeness of instruction in the exam or completeness of information as a student. You must love full knowledge. You don't learn things halfway and abandon it. You must learn it completely. Of course, as a student, you must be a person of deep reflection. You must keep thinking while you're learning every time. As a student, you will need to master the art of memorization and recall of knowledge. How to jot, how to use mind mapping tools to recollect knowledge, how to position things ahead of you in your front on your board at your bed, everywhere, so that you can how to generate acronyms to stimulate memorization. All these are key features that a student who has a strong intellectual yearning should have. You must be curious. Remember, you must seek knowledge with skill. You must ask questions. How did you learn this? How did you know this? How, what did you do differently? And remember, you must seek knowledge with self-control. Master the art of instructions in an exam. The fact that you are knowledgeable may make you get puffed up, but you must seek the knowledge with self-control. You don't get rude to your colleagues. You don't get rude to your teachers because you now know. And you don't get late to the exam or you don't get rude to the exam coordinators. You master the art of instruction in an exam, but you must be hungry. Hunger is the first place. The hunger is driven by passion, narrowed down by focus and then generate curiosity that will make you seek knowledge with skill, with precision and with determination. And remember, you must adapt. You will not be able to learn everything. So adaptation will teach you to follow strategy instead of strength. Another concept you must understand is that every student who excel has some deeper insights than the general insights you have. They run their lives by some deep instructions rather than the general available instructions in books. So I will not deceive you. Every student who excel has a deeper inspiration for why they want to excel. So the first thing I would encourage you today is to seek what's that deep inspiration driving you. Because it will also reflect in your passion. That deep inspiration is what wakes me up in the middle of the night and says, I want to read for the next four hours. That insight on why I need an A in this program is the deep reason that will guide me on what instructions to follow to get an A. In fact, it will guide the kind of friends I will keep. So you need to know that understanding and understanding is our fourth point. So number one, we talked about passion. Number two, we talked about focus. Number three, we talked about curiosity for knowledge. Number four, now we're delving into understanding. And I'm saying understanding comes with inspiration, with insight, and with instruction. And I make you understand that you need to be inspired. You need to be inspired. You need to be inspired to excel. You need deeper insight. You won't get general inspiration that drives students and use it to, have, to excel. And then you need deeper instruction. There are instructions that are given to very serious-minded students only. So you need a strange dimension of inspiration, insight, and instruction for you to excel. Understanding will teach you about time, about moments, about cycles and seasons. There are times where you will be serious. The ability to latch onto moments. Suffers understand this better. Some of us know the exam moment. If I need to read with a lot of calmness, I wake up 3 a.m. I wake up 4 a.m. Some will say I wake up 2 a.m. Some will say, I read very well during the day. At night, I want to sleep. You need to understand your time, your moment, and your cycles. You also need to understand the dynamics of power play in every relationship in your class. Those who are more knowledgeable than you, you must 
seek to sit down with them and ex and and drain them get knowledge from them of course when you go to meet them and they teach you they understand it more and you understand it better as well so it's not like when you go to meet them you collect what they know no you must be a person of sound patience and self-control you must have joy and gratitude in everything you're doing if i'm in the journey of improvement and i try today and i get 30 over 100 i am happy and i'm grateful and then I walk more so that I can get to 38. I walk more so that I can get to 45. I walk more so that I can get to 56. And I keep walking more with joy and with gratitude to drive myself up until I get 80s, until I get 90s. That is how to do things. You must have alignment with a greater purpose. You must understand that your life, the success you have is not only about you. It's about your surname, your family name. It's about your family. It's about your community. It's about your nation. It's about the world. So you're not only succeeding for yourself. And that is this greater purpose is what drives every one of us. Is what drives me doing this video. That greater purpose can inspire you, can give you deeper insight and teach you instructions. It is what will make you understand timing. It is what will make you understand why you need to be patient and you have to control yourself. It is what drives joy and gratitude within you. You must be a person of deep understanding. And I also want to encourage you that dimensions of wisdom, genuine wisdom is clear. And this is the fifth point. You must be a person of wisdom if you want to succeed as a student. In fact, someone says the best blessing for any student is to have intense desire, that's passion, to have focus and to understand the concept of knowledge, understanding and wisdom. So if you are going to pray any prayers, I would urge you to pray for those five things. The ability to stay passionate, the ability to stay focused, the ability to love knowledge, to love understanding, and to love wisdom. If you're able to get those five things, you will rule your world. You will become a great person. And so for wisdom, wisdom is the ability to tell what is right from what is wrong. But I will start with the concept of moral virtue or excellence. As a student, you must discern the quality of doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. What is right in reading? What is right when attending classes? When, what is right when studying? How to study right? You must excel in the quality of doing what is right. I, I tell people, you don't fail the day the result comes out. You have been failing from the first day you know you're doing the program. Because the quality of doing what is right, what you keep doing every day is what integrates together. There's what we call stored work or latent work that keeps building up together to break the lattice and determine if you will succeed or you would fail. But if you now see failure on the day the result comes, then something is wrong with you. The quality of doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong is called virtue. It's called virtuousness. It's moral excellence. Prudence means shrewdness. You must be a person of shrewd thinking and sound judgment. It is the ability to keep oneself from being misled. It's a dimension of wisdom that you need to learn as a student. You need to, ability to keep yourself from being misled, from being misled by a boyfriend, but from being misled by a girlfriend, from being misled by a teacher, uh, a wicked or evil teacher who wants to ask you out. From being misled, you need prudence. You must not be misled into the heart of examination malpractices. You must be a prudent student. Discretion is the ability to use wisdom to devise, imagine, plot, or think of solution. I mean the power of forming plans, your ability to form plans on what you want to do. You need a lot of discretion. You need to devise your lifetime table, and you have to think it up to solve your problem. If mathematics is a weak point and you must do it, then you need to explore more time and more energy into it. The ability to come up with a plan for you to solve a problem is discretion. Sagacious, sagacity is the ability to, to possess or to show sound judgment and keen perception. Someone who can reason and plan the best direction to head in. You must have the capacity to plan the best direction to head towards as a student. You must plan the best direction to head to, towards. You must plan the best direction to head towards in your studies, in the books you read, even the choices of books you will read, in the lectures, your ability to stay attentive to the lecture, the best direction to add in. 
For every examination you want to write, you must embrace sagacity. Each exam has its own different things they are testing for. Counsel means to give good advice, to give wise guidance. It also means to listen to counsel, to depend on one's own judgment only alone is the height of foolishness. You must listen to good advice from your school counselor, from your teacher, your principals, your proprietors. Wise guidance will help you. It is honorable to listen to counsel. You must do this. It is for your own good. It is for you to achieve excellence. I will sit down with a student who has AAA and I will ask questions. How did you get there? What did you do differently? They will tell me they have a corner in the class. They sit down. They sit there for 10 hours a day. They will tell me they have a jotting note. They will tell me the materials they had access to. Deeper instructions they got. Deeper insights they used. And those are the things I will embrace together in my, in my discretion to go and devise a plan. So that I will be a man of sound judgment. I won't be easily misled. And I'll be able to take moral virtue of doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. So all these things as a link. And it will help me to have keen perception towards the direction I should head towards. Sound judgment itself is the ability to receive instruction. You see, some people have find it difficult to receive instruction. And immediately you see yourself resisting instruction. You need to check your wisdom level. It's probably low. And that's foolishness. And folly would defile and destroy you. So sound judgment to receive instruction in wise behavior, in right things, in justice and in equity. You must carry sound judgment as a student. A student, I would advise you to have reverence, reverential fear. Because it will help guide your right attitude to your purpose. It would determine the practical expression of, 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 your, of your attitude, in, even in your day-to-day -day life. Look, you must have some reverential fear of failure. It is honorable. Success and failure are not two different things. They are integral. So if you will succeed, you would have some minor failures in the battle but you will eventually succeed in the whole exam, the war. So while you're preparing, there should be some reverential fear of failure that would drive you. You would have some little, little fails, but you would eventually go and succeed in the big picture. Reverence is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. It's the beginning of the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom. I keep emphasizing a student must have some reverential fear for your teachers, for your, for, for your, for the, for the course you're studying, for the exams, because it will drive you to wake up at night. It will drive your passion. Understanding is another key dimension that I would love you to know. I've discussed extensively about understanding, but under this concept, as a dimension of wisdom, what I'm saying is that in all the knowledge you're trying to acquire, please make sure you understand them because understanding will bat the ease of application. And when you are going to be said to be genuinely knowledgeable, you must have been a man of understanding. You must be able to design the right instructions and applying it to fit the purpose. Power and strength. You need strength to keep going. Wisdom makes one man wiser than powerful 10 rulers in a city. You're said to be truly strong and fortified when you embrace wisdom. I don't compete in strength with people. I don't compete in length of hours of reading. I compete in strategic opportunities and I leech on it and I get my success and I go. But for some people, you will need to read wider, read longer. You, you will need to. You must have a strange adaptation to examination success. Strange adaptation to examination success. It must be one of the key principles that guide you. So, Back to the five points. And I said there are five points you should even pray for actively in your, in your quiet times. Number one is intense desire. That's passion. Number two is strategic focus. Focus. Number three is knowledge. Your pursuit of knowledge. Your curiosity. Your adaptation to gain more knowledge. People get destroyed. People get, get to perish because of lack of knowledge. People are sincerely stupid. That's why I love the quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The most dangerous thing on earth is to be conscientiously stupid, conscientiously ignorant, and, and to latch on sincere, sincere stupidity. 
So you must be a passionate person about knowledge every day. But you must be guarded in the knowledge you're pursuing. That's why you need self-control. You need understanding and you need wisdom. These five things, no man should take it away from you. They would help you in leadership. They will help you in technical problem solving. So as my project reads to them, I would implore you, please, as you listen to this video, embrace passion, be passionate. Embrace focus, be focused on your studies. Be passionate. Remember our agreement is to three hours minimum a day to read, committed. If days would come where you'll be able to read more, do them. Three hours a day minimum. And then embrace curiosity, the pursuit of knowledge. It will distinguish you. Embrace understanding. And ultimately embrace wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. Thank you.